with that was uh, that helped us write it, come up with the idea. And from there, it just kind of springboard, and it went. And we wrote the first draft in like two, two and a half weeks, like the first draft. Fast. It was flowing. It never flew like that. And it was like, let's do this and this. But then you sit on it. You try to raise money, and you know you do have other projects that come in the way, and you're just constantly always going back to it, reworking the script and thinking about it. And then we worked on and partnered with Damien with the Terrifier franchise. And from there, it was like, oh, shit. Like, we could really turn the kills up and make them creative and make them gory. takes to bring this idea that you've had for many years to the masses you know you run that slight risk in seeing somebody else maybe come along with a similar concept so did that ever weigh on your mind that hey you know i have the script that's ready to go yeah, as soon as i saw but, squid, oh, squid as soon as i saw squid games i wanted to jump out the window <laughs> 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 you know, and it's uh, and look, and, and it's even different. It's even different from that, but it's like it's a thing that's in similar vein. Also, th Rob Zombie Thirty One. This script was written before that movie came out. You know what I mean? And it was like the idea was there, and then it's like, oh, okay, now that this is here, how do we do it different from this? You know, and and Rob Zombie's Thirty One is very grungy, very very. I don't know. It's undergroundy. You know what I mean? And this is much more polished. This is much more. I don't want to say skill set involved in the sense of like what's going on within the, you know what I mean it's much more tactical whereas that was just more kind of just in the, in the game itself or whatever they're doing it's kind of schlocked together and it's very gritty and whatever so like there's there's different elements just in the way it's presented um, and when you actually watch stream and you compare it to Squid Games or Mad 31 or whatever Urge or some of the other ones saw or whatever you're going to realize it's not really the same at all but like uh, mm -hmm. on first look or first hearing you're like oh this is kind of like that you know what i mean like that's what i had with squid games it's like oh shit um I'm like damn it should have had this out before but it also shows that there's a want for that you know what i mean because the escape room movies come out and there's a want for this kind of survival against this higher organization or whatever it is you know what i mean like this game and tactical you know what i mean it's exactly what the um the uh, end of the world movies are you know what I mean? It's human versus something. Humans versus nature, bonding together, and, and that's what action movies lived on. You know what I mean? So it's it's kind of got that kind of survival, you know, uh, kill or be killed, you know, mentality. And and you know, it's it, again I, the thing I keep going back to is I want people to come out of this saying they were entertained and it was a fun movie. Nice. <laughs> Yeah, that's awesome, man. And so, you know, you, you already touched up on this with uh, like Damien and the crew uh, influencing the uh, script with their, you know, your interactions or whatnot. But what about the fans? Like, how did that also influence some changes into your script? Oh, huge. You know, just meeting with the fans and and talking with them and saying, oh, you know, somebody said something. I can't remember what it was, but somebody literally said something. And whether it was online or we were with them in person, I said, oh, that's pretty freaking cool. We should definitely do that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, or we should try to <laughs> do something like that. Dave would be the first one to tell you with Terrifier 1 to Terrifier 2, he listened to the fans. Now, you have to be smart because you can't just listen to everybody and then just your, your, your project's just garbage all over the place and just, you know, from this one and that. You have to have some captain steering the ship. But if you're smart enough and disciplined enough to take what people tell you and use the stuff that works for whatever you're trying to do at its core and then kind of just no, you know cancel out some of the other stuff you know there's a good director and storyteller i feel knows when to take advice and then when not to take advice you know so that's really what it is but i'll yes. tell you if, if we're lucky enough to get a stream too which i hope so there's so many ideas that i just have just from not only working now on terrifier two and three with the crew and damien but then also just being out with the fans in the convention, seeing movies like in a violent nature, seeing what's really, you know, what's out there and what people want and what people excites them. And you know, that's what we want to do. We want to deliver as horror fans. You want to give them what they want. You know what I mean? That's what I want in a movie. And um, so hopefully we can get one and we can do that. And again, it's going to be even more helpful now that we have a film out there for people to see. And then they could kind of weigh in on exactly what the movie is and say, oh, this is great. More of this or, eh, you know, I didn't like this as much. And then you kind of weigh and you see, OK, if there's a lot of people saying it, maybe they have something there. And we listen. Yeah. 
That's all. Now we've seen a groundswell. I don't think we've kind of ever seen this for another film that's out there. So I don't mean to put you on the spot, but before the movie's even released, <laughs> there's people that are dressing up as cos, you know, cosplaying as the players. Yeah. We have merchandise being sold, like these masks. We have coloring books. It's crazy. T-shirts. It's crazy. And it, posters. It, it's. I was talking to one of the guys that licensed the uh, some of the stuff, and he goes, "You know, I've never been a part of a movie that has sold out." on merch, let alone even had merch, before the movie's even out and people care. There are people with tattoos, you know, with- yeah. of, of No like, way. Oh yeah, yeah, there, there's there, there's a, a great guy, this guy Ron, he's got a tattoo of one of the killers on his arm, stream. And there's another guy I just met that says, oh, next time I see you, I'm working on it, I'm getting a tattoo of player three on my arm. And it's crazy. And then I make a joke, I said, what if you don't like the movie? <laughs> <laughs> The director's oh, no. telling you that. One of the directors, yeah. well, you don't like it. I mean, that's a logical thing to say. You know what I mean? And, like everything's subjective. Yeah. I don't know. I I think we made a good movie. I'm excited about it. But what yeah. if you don't like it? You know, now you got to keep looking at that, which is I think the, <laughs> that's the greatest thing. But it's like you know what I mean? Like so, it's it's crazy. It's so surreal, and that just shows you know the the, the confidence and the support the fans have for us, and you know that means a lot. And we don't take that lightly we don't take that for granted you know and that's why we also work so hard it, it drives us even further to say we want to deliver for the fans and we want to put something good out there a good product and we want to you know make it a fun ride and deliver and deliver the goods for them nice yeah it's got to be something you know your childhood dream is beloved before it hits the yep. theaters it's got to be like a, a weird weird feeling it's 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 crazy and, and like i said you know it, it it's all wonderful but the main thing is as long as people go to the theaters to see it because that that's what's <laughs> going to give it its life you know beyond into the general audience and beyond that and, and again we have some really cool ideas i'd love to do another one um great group of people and uh again you know we're we're working hard and i and i i would love for everybody that's a part of the film to experience some of the success that we experienced with terrifier um, but we can't do it without our with our great fan base, and, and hopefully, uh, you know, they dig it. That's that's all I care about. Yeah, yeah. and it's, uh, it's it's glad that I'm glad that you bring that up too because it's changed, right? Everything has changed today with streaming and stuff that's out there. Films don't find a second life like they did back in the VHS and DVD. Yeah, days. and that's because there's so much. Have. Yeah, and that's because there's so yeah. much. It, it's just there's yep. too much to have, and that's what it is. Like you would get things years later. That would, like you said, would pop up, and it, you know, if you didn't have success now, you can have success then. It's so hard. It's like, and the mind says, "Boom, show me now, done." What have you done for me lately? What have you done for me lately? And it's like it's forgotten, it's pushed, and it's shoved. I mean, there's movies now that you see on Amazon Prime or any of these streaming services. It's featured, boom, one day, and you think this thing should, and then it's gone, and you don't even. Where was that movie? What was it yeah. called? Eh, I don't know. You know, it's funny. I made a joke today. I said we have a movie called Stream. We never thought we'd be in theaters. We have a movie called Stream about streaming coming out in theaters. <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's a good way to look at it too yeah, go, um, figure. We, but... <laughs> go ahead sorry no, i was saying go for, i mean we never thought that would be possible i think that's kind of serendipitous too that's like hey you know in a world of streaming we're coming out in theaters with a movie called stream <laughs> <laughs> and i think to your point too i think um by all your merch and everything selling out and people you know getting these tattoos and stuff like that uh that in itself is building an audience so you know what i mean that could definitely be a really good thing and a really good turnout for you right yeah. because you know everyone's talking to each other right yeah and hey look at my great. tattoo yeah. oh what is that yeah oh yeah without a doubt you know what it is too uh, somebody mentioned to me the mask is cool that they're out i'm glad we wanted to make sure they were out before the movie because people are saying they want to wear them to the theaters show up wear them bring them because you know what it's going to do it's going to make some of these other average joe moviegoers say what is that what, what's going on it's and and, and pique the interest and hopefully you know, people, it'll get noticed, hopefully, and, and, and it'll kind of go beyond and kind of break beyond that little circle that knows about it. And we'll see where it goes. Yeah, yeah that was fun with Terrifier, too. Like, we're going in with T-shirts and hats on. Like, hey, what's up? I know where you're going to see. Yeah, yeah. It's it's a cool little family, and our fan base is really a part of it. Uh, we got a great group with the Art the Clown Appreciation Society. They've been wonderful in supporting us. You're wearing the shirt right there. And, yeah. and, and some of the Art the Clown Appreciation Society guys and girls uh, came over to uh, to join the stream, the stream team. There's another group now that, that was made, and they're there and they're supporting. And, you know, there's not enough of them yet, but hopefully soon, you know, so we can't live there. We got, you know, but hopefully soon it'll 
it'll pick up. And, it, and it's, it's just incredible. I'm so happy and honored and humbled that there are people that care about the stuff that we're doing. It's always a really good feeling, uh, you know, when you create something, like you said, and it just, it's hard to explain to people that don't do it. Right. You know, it's very hard. So, uh, but before we go, while we're beginning of the stream train coming, right? Uh, you're partnering with the director of The Mean One uh, on Screenbook. Yes. So what can you tell us about that, if anything? <laughs> yeah, we, uh, so that guy, the director, Stephen Lamorte, is a friend of mine I grew up with. I went to high school with him. He's a Staten Island guy as well, but he's out in, he's out in uh, La La Land now. He lives out in California, out in LA. And uh, he did The Mean One. And we actually helped him out behind the scenes with that to getting David Howard Thornton part of the project you know because we obviously had him with terrifier and he was looking for someone to portray the grinch and we just thought it was a perfect fit so we we connected them and he had his own success with the mean one there's a, a nice little fan base there that you know really enjoys not only just christmas horror but you know the kind of horror comedy and what he was going for and obviously we were successful with terrifier too so we were always trying to find a way to work together and now that we had two successes that were kind of outside of each other so oh, it might be cool to come together and, and, and do something um so we got david back and uh we decided to uh get him behind the wheel there of, of the boat and uh stern and uh you know make him uh make him steamboat willie and streamboat and uh we actually shot the film it is done we completed it the movie's finished um nice yeah we, we went boom it's like shoot terrifier shoot screamboat i mean this was back to back get stream ready we did this other film called pitchfork retreat which is uh really fantastic that we did it'll be out soon it's got a great cast um so we've been working we've been busy but uh screamboat is going to be fun it's um a different kind of thing it's got your gore it's got your you know it's got that element that you know if you're coming to see anything we're a part of it's gonna have but uh it's got a lot of comedy to it and um it's satire it's a little spoofy um so it's a different kind of movie but it, it's fun to kind of go to the comedic roots with it and uh, do a movie that doesn't take itself too seriously i mean look at the subject matter it's a murdering mouse <laughs> so we had fun with i can't it. wait awesome. yeah we had fun with it i can't wait Ruin my childhood. That's what I say when people complain. It's like, oh, you ruined my childhood. No, ruin yeah, away. Yeah. Take them all. You know what it is? You're yeah, reliving your all. childhood again. I think it's your, you know, now yep. you're letting you enjoy it again, but as an adult. That's how I look at yep. it. Yep. <laughs> That's awesome. Alrighty, so we're going to dive into six questions. So I already told you my favorite horror film franchise. What is your favorite horror film? It's a tough one. I'm going to give you a, I, I, it's a tough one because it's between Halloween, Leprechaun, and Nightmare on Elm Street. Those are three big ones. And the original, it's not a film though. It's a mini series, but Stephen King's it. Oh, yes. All right. Uh, you, you guys are going to hate me. I don't like it. <laughs> oh God. Hey, but it's good. No, Subjective. Comment, comment, comment. Yep. <laughs> I like Tim Curry in his role. Didn't no, like that's the what I'm saying. The, the iteration of Tim, the iteration yep. of Tim Curry. I thought the other movie was better, yep. the kids. But I thought t if you would have taken Thank Tim you. into that, it, you know, it, it, Tim out of that movie and into the one with the kids, that would have been probably a perfect film. Thank you. I've been saying that. Thank you. I don't know. Maybe it was seeing the spider crab on the actual wires that threw me out of that film. Yeah, yeah. it's got its issues. It's got its issues. <laughs> but it was made for TV. That's fine. That's fine. All right, so favorite horror villain? Freddy Krueger. Favorite final girl? Sienna. No. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> She's badass. Uh, no, um, Laurie Strode. Last great film that you watched? Oh, damn. I, uh, I actually had this, you know, in a violent nature. Yeah. All right. Nice. And then one film everyone should watch. Does it have to be horror? <laughs> oh, My no. Cousin Vinny. Oh, yes. all right. Yes. All right. And, and then our final question. Peeps, candy, stale or fresh? Which way do you prefer? Fresh. Ah, all right, all right perfect now you've been on our channel many times before and speaking about films that you love so we did 
a few years ago, you were on an episode of Five Things where we talked about indie, independent films from the 2000s. And I think at the time, you set a record for the most films that you list off in uh, your honorable mentions. Right. So, you know, if you go back and check, take a look at some of his films that he's influenced him over the years, great list. I remember we talked list. about 2001 Maniacs. We went into some really crazy yep. ones, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. All right. Now, you're going to be back in uh, a couple weeks after the, everything has been released because we have something really shocking to release that we want to talk about but before you go plug away where can people find you find the film etc right now follow at stream franchise or at fuzz in the lens those are the two places it's on every social media use the hashtag join the stream guys please if you can get your pre-sale tickets share it talk about the movie share the trailer just just get help us get the word out there about stream uh, if you want to see the movie, see it, see it again, buy tickets and don't see it, you know, <laughs> as long as, uh, you know, we just get the word out there it truly means the world and we can't thank you enough. And, uh, let's show Hollywood why independent horror film is where it's at and why we need new fresh and creative ideas. You know, it's funny that you say that I have the Regal movie pass. I might buy tickets over a certain period of days because uh, they're all free. And then just to get the, you know more tickets out there. Dang, but I'm sure I'll probably see There's one guy that said uh, Pete was like, oh, I'm buying 15 tickets day one. I wonder if he did. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, I did that with Scream 6. I bought uh, back-to-back tickets because I wanted to do Easter eggs and I wanted to enjoy it before I actually started doing my homework for the channel. Man, I regretted that for that movie. <laughs> well, that's what I'm saying. They have studio backing. We don't, so. <laughs> yep. Oh, man, thank you. All right, so thank you for joining us for this episode of Behind the Mask. Again, we'll be back in a couple of weeks to talk about the surprises that you'll have seen with it, maybe the possible future direction of the franchise itself and where it's going. And uh, everybody, have a great day. And just to let everybody know, we are running a contest this summer where every video that gets 100 likes and 100 comments will have our subscribers eligible to win this Puppet Master Blu-ray box set with all of the films included in it. It's a $120 value that we're giving away for free. So drop in the comments what your favorite kill in this episode was, what your least favorite kill in this episode was what we should have included because we may include it in a future episode or answer the question at the end of the video. So like, subscribe, and help our channel grow and win something in the process. <laughs>